Raphael Webb, welcome back. Time for stanza three. We see the first line starts off with Messiah help me. So Messiah is the African pronunciation of Messiah. This is a reference to the Christian God, um, to Jesus who is seen as the Messiah. And here we have the, the speaker of the poem in such a desperate state that she needs to appeal to her God. Um, she's asking for help. She is completely vulnerable. She doesn't know where else to turn. She's appealing to a higher being. And we see also with the exclamation mark um, that this really is a, a supplication or, or a prayer or something that is highly emotive for her. And she's asking for this help. Uh, it's interesting in that African culture or African religion today um, is mostly Christian, at least in South Africa, um, in other African countries African people um, have adopted Islam. Uh, but here in South Africa, most African people will follow Christianity and also a, a blend of Christianity with their African beliefs. So it's more, it's called sort of, well, it's called African Christianity. Before uh, missionaries arrived in this country, missionaries are people who uh, work for the church and they spread um teachings and the word is, words of Jesus and there was a big influx of missionaries um, with the colonialism with colonialism uh, people coming in from Europe and spreading Christianity in this country so that Christianity was not originally the religion of African people and they had their own system of beliefs um, you might have heard of referring to ancestors um, and, and other kinds of traditions, and that today has sort of merged with the Christian beliefs. So here we have her appealing to the Christian God, but even the name has taken on an African pronunciation, Messiah. And so we see that it's become more Africanized. Okay. Um, then she moves into the next line, line 10, and she says, my name is so simple. So this is interesting. Okay. To the bur 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 sorry, burly bureaucrat. It's anything but simple. He can't pronounce it. Okay. It's complicated. To anyone who is not an Isitosa speaker, this name is a tongue twister. And someone who is not an Isitosa speaker will have to learn how to speak it. But to her, whose name it is, it is so simple. She knows what it means. She knows how to say it. And it's beautiful. Okay. She then says it's so meaningful. Okay. So look at that. Usually when something is simple, it's not necessarily meaningful. Okay. Meaningful implies that there's a, a complexity to it. And that's why she uses this conjunction yet. Because it's showing a contrast. Okay. So it's simple, but it's also complex meaningful okay it's got memory it's got layers it's representing generations it, it means something to her and then she says but to this man this man okay she doesn't give him a name which is a very interesting concept she is doing exactly what he has done to her nowhere here does she say his name yeah, um, I mean, it's not like it's going to be a nice conversation where they go, hello, how are you, what's your name, etc. Okay, but usually a bureaucrat might have like a tag on, on his shirt or even she might have, the speaker might have decided to give him a name. But in this particular instance, she doesn't. She keeps him anonymous, okay, which is an interesting thing because that's exactly what he is doing to her. And then she says it's trash. So her name to him is something that you can just throw away. Okay, it's easy to discard. It has no value. Okay, so there's a contrast here. To her, it is simple, it is meaningful. But to him, it has no value. Okay, and then we have the ellipsis over here. Generally, the function of an ellipsis is to indicate that there's more to follow. It can create a dramatic pause. It has lots of different functions. I would say in this particular instance, it's giving that dramatic pause. It's allowing the reader to 
actually absorb the information, absorb this contrast, because it is quite a powerful one.